Hello. Alrighty, so I'm going to make a dress, and this is it. It is a Cynthia Rowley simplicity. Alrighty, pattern. so we're going to try to figure this out. It's an interesting way of putting together a lining in a dress. So what it says is you're going to start with the right side and we turn both the lining and the dress inside out. Oh my goodness. You know what? I'm going to start at the bottom. I think that'll make it easier. All right. So starting with the underarm seam here, I'm going to match that seam up. And I just kind of pulled the sleeve from the dress through the lining, and they're both inside out. And I'm just going to pin it all the way up to this point here, where they all come together, which is right here. Okay. Now, uh, if you remember right, I actually eased in some spacing here, but since this is the lining and it's not really going to show, I'm just going to make some little mini pleats to work that same amount of ease in on this front area. Because I think that will be just fine. They're just tiny little pleats, and the um, fabric itself is so thin, it's not going to add any bulk. So anyhow, you know what? I'm going to move these pleats down towards the bottom, actually, because that way, even if they were visible from the outside, hopefully no one is staring at my underarm that closely, you know? It's, it's pinned in this way, and I'm going to do it, pin it the same way along this back area where these two places are meeting up, which should be right around here. I'm going to pin that together there, just like that. All right, so I've got that pinned, and what it says is to stitch it, I'm assuming, at a 5 8 seam allowance. And then it says stitch it again an eighth of an inch in, and it says be careful not to catch seam allowances. So I'm, when it says be careful not to catch seam allowances, I'm assuming it means this seam allowance because obviously you're catching seam allowances if you're sewing on the seam allowance. So it's kind of confusing those instructions, but I'm just going to try to do my best. So this whole seam here at 5 8 and then come back and do it an eighth of an inch inside in the seam allowance so I have two rows of stitching. All right, so I've got my two rows of stitching in here and now it says between notches, and you can't see them, but my notches are right about here, to trim it very close to that second row. So, okay, I'm guessing this is to make sure that underarm will turn nicely and not bulk up, which, you know, I can appreciate that. It's always harder going over seams. So I'm going to trim these out like that. All right, so that's what it looks like for right now. Right now we're just doing one sleeve because it says 
We're just working on one side here. So now we're going up here. Pin upper right armhole edge of lining and dress together. Matching shoulder seams and large dots. Stitch seam above large dots. Back stitching at large dots. If you prefer, trim entire seam. So now they're saying after you've done this, do the top part of the sleeve basically. So let me flip it over here. I guess it's supposed to be easier maybe if you do it half at a time. I don't know. I just don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by matching up my shoulder seam. That seems the most reasonable place to start. And pin that. And getting my seam allowances somewhat going the right way here. I'm going to go ahead and pin around these sides, whoopsie, these sides here the same way. All right, and something I'm doing because it's kind of hard to see where the stitching is on this side. And if I'm sewing on this side, I want to make sure I don't go into where my sleeve is. So when I stick a pin in, you know, I'll put it about 5 eighths here, but I'm going to make sure it actually goes through where my sewing line is, where my stitching line is down there. Okay, so the, I've got so many lines because of all of my uh, gathering threads and everything, but I've got it sewn on here. I mean, that's my stitching line. Okay, so the pin comes out at my stitching line and then I tuck it back in. And then with my little chalk pencil, whoopsie, just putting a little circle. And that way from this side, I can make sure that I can follow from dot to dot to um, follow the right place because I don't want to come in too far this way. This is kind of a pain. I feel like there should be an easier way of doing this, but you know, the designer must have had some idea for why, so I'm going to go ahead and follow their plan. All right, I want to show you what I did, because I did the bottom seam down here, and the top seam I didn't come all the way to meet. I actually have a couple inches of spacing there, and that's because there's so much weird stuff going on where these two meet. I did not want to risk it getting caught in there oddly, so I start it here and go up. So now I turned it so that, you know, this is the, the good side of looking at it. I can just put a couple little pins here and I can just do a couple little invisible hand stitches. Sew up this little two inch area right here. And I think that that's a lot better for problem solving. So like on this side, I just moved it over. You see how it's open right there? I'm just going to set it down nicely, pin that in, and put some hand stitches in there. Okay, so this is where the origami stuff starts to get really confusing. So this is my dress. This is the front looking up at me. This is my lining over here to the side, okay? So this arm is sewed together. All right, hang on a second. Let me raise you up here. All right, so I need to work on this sleeve. And what it says is to take the underarm of that corresponding sleeve, and I'm going to match the right side of this with the right side of this. So I'm basically, this is the sleeve part, so I'm sandwiching that sleeve in there, and I'm pinning this I'm going to pin it. Oh, I'm not going to pin you. I'm just going to pin you right across the top up here because I don't know what I'm doing at this point. Okay, so that's being held together. And now I'm flipping all my lining up top. And I'm going to go ahead and just like I did the other sleeve, hang on, trim this little tail off here. Um, just go ahead and pin up the underarm part 
from the point where everything matches up. I'm actually going to start it just below all that because I just don't want to deal with running into that. I will whip stitch it down just like I did on the other side. So right underneath that I'm going to start pinning my um, lining to my fashion fabric. And again it's a sandwich. The sleeve piece is in the middle, the lining is on this side, the dress part is on this side. Okay. So let me go ahead and pin those down. And on this side, it's going to be the same deal. I'm going to open this up. Okay. Where matching up this area up here where everything is joining together. Okay, and I'm actually going to start sewing it just below all of this stuff so I don't catch any of that. And just like I did on the other side, because I did add in about half an inch over here, I'm going to just put that extra ease down here and tiny pleats down next to the uh, underarm seam. So let me go ahead and get all that pinned. And um, again, I'm going to be sewing it, probably looking at this side. I'm going to be sewing it um, right along the same seam that I did before and then coming back in an eighth of an inch into the seam allowance and doing it a second time. All right, so I have this underarm seam sewed here and just like the other one, I am going to make sure I'm not clipping anything I'm not supposed to, trim it down um, because I have that second row of stitching there that's going to keep it from unraveling. So just enough so that that underarm area is going to lay smoothly. Okay, so I had to like straighten some stuff out here. And be careful because there is a very big chance right now that you can get things sewed cockeyed and have it like this. And you'd have to unpick stitches to pull it back out again. So just be careful what you're doing. Um, what I actually need to do is sew this seam in two different steps, it says. It says it wants me to sew um, the back portion and then turn and do the front portion. And I'm guessing that that's because there's going to be something in the way. So let me go ahead and pin the back portion just so that I can get that part done and then we'll work on the front portion. All right, so this is a very cockeyed way to put in lining, just saying. But um, what I have here is this is where I stopped before with the underarm part. Again, I'm leaving it open for a couple inches just so I don't screw this part up. So I put a little dot here so you can see where I'm going to start sewing. And I'm going to sew along the seam line on this side. And I'm going to take it all the way up. This is my shoulder seam here. And I'm going to take it a couple inches past. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take it, I'm going to do something different than what their instructions say. I am going to take it um, on probably, what is this? One, two, three, four, probably about four inches beyond the shoulder seam. And what that's going to do is leave me an opening about this big. And I should be able to pull things through and put them right side out through this opening and then I'm just going to close that up by hand. That's my plan. Let me go ahead and sew this and we'll see how it turns out. All right, so this is kind of coming together. I actually had caught a little piece of my lining in a different way, so I had to pick out a few stitches here. Um, but I still need to come back in here and do some handwork to close this little section up. But at least it's together. So, um, right now my opinion on this dress is do it in a fabric that's thick enough that you don't need a lining. But, right now I need to come back in here. I'm just going to fold it, my little seam allowances underneath and uh, hand stitch these down. And the same thing with the little areas that I missed, like right in here and things. I'm just going to hand stitch those down too, and I'll be right back.
All right, so this is the type of thing on this project that's driving me crazy. I finally got all of this done, thought it was good, and I have one single stitch from sewing in that lining that is catching a pucker right there that I'm going to have to unpick, and which means going back in and reinforcing something else probably. But just little things like that, that this method makes it so prone to get. So anyway, I'll fix that. But what I need to do right now is match up my necklines. And I have the stay tape on there, so hopefully it's going to do its job. If anything, this is a very grand experiment for how strong this stay tape is because I have been pulling and turning right side out and inside out and yanking on this neckline a lot. And it looks like it's holding its piece pretty darn well. So yay, that's another big thumbs up for that product. But let me go ahead, fix this part right here. And then what I'm gonna do is just with a hand, hand basting it, you know, big long hand basting stitches about a quarter inch in, I'm going to stitch that and then let's pop it on the dress form and see what it looks like. Alrighty, so this is what we have so far. Okay, and it's alright, it's alright. I don't like how at this point here where everything comes together, when you're looking at it from the front, it seems like it wants to dive in there. Okay, and I think that's all of the different things coming together and strange geometrical shapes and things um, because I have a whole lot of weight right here. All of this weight is the whole underarm seam and all that lining and everything else and that's just putting a really big tug right here. And I feel like that's pulling it out and that this little trim piece on here um, is making it more obvious. All right, so that's just my opinion. But it might just be because of my dress form. It might be that when it's on an actual human body, it doesn't show up that much. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, my opinion at this point is, if you really feel like you want to do this dress, at least if I was to do it again, one, I would use an opaque fabric so I don't have to line it. I think all of this stuff is is just a headache, okay? And two, I would leave off this thing because I think it's just making this point obvious. There's no problem with putting extra trim on, but I would put it afterwards. I would embellish it with a trim. I would run a row of braid or a row of piping or something. You know, I could do that in a different way so it's not showing that, especially with a fabric this light. You know, it's calling for very light fabrics. I mean, lightweight, but very drapey. And once, even though it's, they're both very lightweight fabrics, you know, extremely, you put that much in one spot where it all wants to hang and it's going to distort unless you have some kind of reinforcement underneath there. And I don't like this dress enough to take it apart and put reinforcement in. So let's go ahead and finish it. I need to put the neck band on here next. So I'll show you how that's done. So this is my neck band and I, it's cut on a semi bias. It's supposed to be on a true bias, but I didn't have enough fabric to do that. So I placed it on a semi bias and I think that's going to be fine. I've marked my center front and I've marked my shoulder seams, which are these dots and the center front line. And so what I need to do is, um, so I come back and sew the two ends together at a 5 8 seam allowance and press these open. All right, so I've got the band pinned on all the way around and it does need to be cut on somewhat of a bias because when you get to these corners of the front, you're going to need to kind of stretch it and mold it to go around there. Now the pattern calls for this to be a quarter inch um, seam allowance. I'm going to make it pretty close to that. I just want to make sure that I make it wide enough that I can go all the way over my basting stitches. So mine might be a hair over a quarter inch, but I'll be close to that. All right, so I have my band sewed on. Just dust that chalk line off, I guess. And what I need to do now is bend the uh, 
neck band around the seam allowance. I'm leaving the seam allowance standing up as is. I'm not clipping that. I don't think that I need to because the band is on a bias and it's going to kind of wrap around that and the the band is so sheer that the seam allowance is actually what's going to give it some kind of structure. I'm thinking at this point, you know, we will see, time will tell. So I'm just kind of folding it and folding it in underneath and just clipping it all the way around like that. Okay, I am going to be coming back and stitching this down by hand um, just because there's really no top stitching on this whole garment. So if I was to top stitch that, I think it would be out of character with the rest of it at this point. But I'm going to finish this up, stitch it under, and move on to the next part. All right, just want to give you a quick peek. I've got the band all stitched in. I just whip stitched it in by hand so it's nice and neat in there. Gave it a quick press just to try to shrink in some of that bias on the edges here. And now I'm ready to make the belt. Technically, the instructions want you to hem it now, but I don't want to hem it until I can see what length it's going to be when I put the belt on it. So that's why I'm skipping to the belt part first. All right, so it's a really long sash, and um, if you can see on here, it's quilted. Well, maybe you can't see on the camera here, but it's basically a long quilted sash. And uh, there's two pieces, so the first thing I'm going to do is sew them together here at the end. Now, you need to line it when what they request is a soft cotton. And because it looks like it should be quilted, I'm thinking it should be a fluffy cotton. So I have some of this gray left over from my Hearthkeeper dress, which is on my other mannequin you might have seen over there. But it's a uh, flannel. And so because it's a cotton flannel, it's a little bit lofty, so that's nice. Now this is going to be folded in half this way. So if I interline it with this, I'm actually going to have two layers of the cotton flannel. And I think that that should quilt up really nicely. So one other thing that I noticed is um, this is some of that really wide um, flannel that's usually over where the quilting fabrics are. I think it's 108 inches wide or something like that. They're usually 108 or 120. But when I held it up to this piece, one complete strip of it was the exact size I would need to cover two lengths of this. So that's kind of handy. So if you're going to do this and you're looking for something like that from this really wide stuff, just get an eighth of a yard of it. You know, make sure it's torn straight and everything. But an eighth of a yard of this will do the whole belt really nicely. So anyhow, I am going to go, first thing is sew the end here at 5 8 press it open, and then just lay this on top of it, and I'll show you what we do from there. Alrighty, so my seam is here, and actually let me flip it up here. So my seam allowance is on this side, all right? So I am placing it, in the center of my flannel with the seam allowance down so that the right side is on the outside. And I'm just going to pin it here um, all the way down. This flannel is actually a really good stabilizer, especially for something as slinky as this stuff. It, it wants to hold, you know, the whole flannel graph thing. It really wants to hold. So once I get it all on here, I'm supposed to come back and about half an inch in, uh, baste it up both ways just to hold it in place. All right, so I just ran it through my sewing machine. You could probably see it this side better just with the long basting stitches up and down each side. So before I go any further, what I'm supposed to do now is come in and trim everything down and it says close to stitching. I'm going to do probably about an eighth of an inch away from my basting stitches um, up and down each side. Okay, so this is my center seam right here. I have it all trimmed down. You know, 
see if you can see that there for a bit, little over an eighth of an inch. It depends, you know, it's a long strip. But I'm going to fold it and I need to leave an opening in the middle that's wide enough that I can turn everything. So I'm just going to put a little double pin where I want that to be because when I see a double pin, I have to stop and take care of that and that jogs my memory to stop sewing. So do it like that. All right, so I'm just going to keep pinning all the way up here and at the very corner, or at the very tip, it's going to make a nice little edge like that. So I'm supposed to sew it at 3 eighths of an inch and, you know, leaving this open and then flip it right side out. Alrighty, so I've got my ends and everything sewn. I am just going to come in here and trim off that excess bulk around the edges. And I'm going to use my big old lobster claw point turner. So put, I'm putting, it has a pointy end and a round end, so I'm putting the rounded end inside here and you just kind of feed the whole little edge over it. Just give me one second. Okay, so I've got it all fed through. I'm just going to get my little round part to the end, squeeze it closed, and then very carefully, 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 move everything back to the other side of the turner. Lots of layers going on here. Do it this way. Okay, it's very fat with all of those layers in there, but if I can get to the point where it pokes out, that's all I need. So I can open this up again and pull it out, grab that little point and pull it through. So what I'm going to do is, you know, pull out these edges as closely as I can and go ahead and iron this flat so that oh, the ends line up. Okay, so here's one thing I am seeing right now I don't like. Um, it feels like the big flannel parts are wanting to separate from here. I think if I was to do this again, what I would do is also run a line of basting stitches down the very center to hold that because it's, it's like this whole part is wanting to separate. So. Anyhow, just throwing that out there, that's what I would do. But let me go ahead and finish turning this, very carefully ironing it flat, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, so I have this pressed, and I just want to reiterate that when I have the two layers there, if you can't baste it down the middle, I would run a strip of stitch witchery and fuse them down the middle, because it's just about impossible to keep them lined up exactly. And so because of that, there's um, big stretches where I have a fold. You can kind of see here's the, you know, it's sheer here because I can't get everything up to line up right. Since I'm going to be just making multiple rows of stitches on here, I'm not going to worry about it because it's going to look like, you know, ridges anyway. But it does kind of bother me, but not enough to take it apart and redo it if that makes any sense. So what I need to do right now is they want you to top stitch it a quarter inch, um, basically rows a quarter inch apart. So I'm also um, going to top stitch on the edge where I have that opening because that'll just close it up nicely there. So I'm going to go ahead and get started, just, you know, running row after row after row. All right, so I had grand intentions of making these perfectly straight and following my lines, and that didn't work out too well because I realized when I started that my lines aren't perfectly straight. Um, and then I started looking like a drunken sailor walking down the road. You know, no offense to drunken sailors, but, but it's fine. It's good enough. I definitely have the quilty effect and everything here, so I'm going to go ahead and tie this up onto uh, my dress form, and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so this is tied around the back and I kind of bloused it up like 
it normally would be if you were walking around and moving. So I raised up the sleeves to see how that would work and everything. And this is a knot in the front here. And I don't know, it's, it's actually cute. Um, the lining's a pain, but it's actually cute at this point. So looking at the hem and measuring me, measuring this dress, um, I actually don't want to shorten it very much. Now, remember I said these didn't quite come long enough? They're all about an inch or so short, and maybe that's the idea is that they wanted them an inch or so short. I don't know. But what they want you to do is basically make a very narrow hem for a hem on these. Um, and then they want you to do the same thing for the lining, but they want the lining to be half an inch shorter than this one. Okay, so move my snack. I was thinking, what is the point in having a cute little style dress if you're going to make it a non-cute length? So I'm just going to go for the gusto and make this shorter. I am going to cut about four inches off of the length and we are going to have ourselves a cute little dress just for fun. So I'm going to go ahead and just all the way around because it is slightly curved, make my marks, cut it off at four inches. And then for the part here, I am just going to use my rolled, uh, it's, it's like a rolled hem foot for the serger. It just makes a tiny little edge. I'm just going to do that for the lining. I think that's going to be fine. And then I will serge this regular and that'll give me a nice edge that's not going to fray out and everything that I can just turn under. So that's my plan. I'm going to cut off four inches all the way around. So the way I'm doing this is I am just putting a little dot at four inches all the way around. And then I can come back with my scissors. I'm going to cut the fashion fabric layer one at a time. And then I can come back after I have this hemmed and trim the lining layer to the length that it needs to be. So, All right, so after I cut it, I used the little rolled hem foot on my serger and did the edge really, really tightly. And now, well, this is where I started, so it's a little bit gamey there. But um, from there, with that on there, I could just turn it under and make a tight little, really nice, narrow hem. And so I like that. I like that a lot. I just wanted to show you because I just got to the end and I realized, oh my goodness, I don't think I have any video of sewing at my machine. So we have to throw that in there. So here we go. So there it is. It's very short. Just, just ignore my white legs. I'm a redhead in Ohio. That's all I can say. But it's comfy. It's kind of cute. I made it short, way shorter than I would normally feel comfortable with. But I'm thinking it's supposed to be kind of like a going out somewhere in the evening type of a dress, especially with this fabric, you know, with the little metallic-y stuff. That's a little more evening, at least to me. And so I'm thinking, well, in theory, it's a, oh, go out dancing dress. Now, I haven't been out dancing in decades, but you know, in theory, it's a go out dancing dress. But okay, look at this. These sleeves are so full that I can raise up my arm all the way, and this does not move at all. There is absolutely huge range of motion here. And this is a fairly low neckline, but I feel pretty secure in it too. 
Um, it doesn't feel like it's going to gape way open. And I leaned way over in front of the camera, you know, so you can get an idea of how much it's going to gape. And hopefully I'm not normally leaning that far over people. But um, I think it's cute. Okay, so the construction of it, though, had some issues. The way that the lining is attached to this dress is a nightmare. Um, I would suggest, if I'm ever going to do this again, I'm going to use a fabric that is opaque enough that I don't need a lining because the way that it was done, it's just, it's horrific. Um, these little pleaty things here that are supposed to be like, you know, a design feature, uh, it's cute, but I don't think it's cute enough to justify, ah, my cat, sorry. Stop it, cat. Go. To justify all the extra hassle of making it. Let me put my foot on my tripod here. Okay. I think I've got my foot on my tripod so the cat can't knock it over. Not the old cat. The old cat I held is Thumbelina. She's ancient. She's cool. It's this little troublemaker here. She's a troublemaker. Anyway. Um, so the lining is a bad thing. Have patience, do it if you want to. The instructions, it's kind of like following origami with the instructions, but you know, if you want to, go for it. Um, with the belt, put something in that middle because yeah, it worked and I sewed it and everything, but it wasn't perfect. And because I had those funky little folds and creases in there because that center part was not attached, um, my stitching wanted to go like that. Does it really make a difference? Probably not. But would it make it easier to put it together if it was attached? Yeah, it would. So anyhow, that's my two cents on this dress. Um, I think that, I think that it's okay. I think it's okay. Um, but I do like the sleeves. That's the big thing for me. I love these sleeves. And so... I won't, I won't disparage Cynthia Rowley for it. <laughs> Anyhow, I hope you liked it. I got to go try to find a baby cow out here somewhere. So I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. If I be city strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin, and move the horses in to the barn, and time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light pleases me, as it is plain to see. I'm living. My bucolic life. 